it's Vervain, and I'm going to pour some tea today. And I thought also that I would like to talk a little bit about something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. I haven't outlined this at all, so I apologize if this kind of jumps around a bit. But I want to talk about a little bit of my journey with the runes and what it's been like wearing them in my hair. As you can maybe see, I do wear a lot of them in my hair. I think this is Rido here, and maybe I'll get some up close footage of this. So here we've got Ansu's, uh, Gebo, Uru's, Thurasa's, Kina's, Fehu, what's this one? Wunyo, and Rido is right here. And so I've only got eight of them in my hair right now, and only the first eight, and um, it's because I'm working through Diana Paxson's book, Taking Up the Runes. The thing about the runes is that like any magical system, or really like anything, I don't think this is just magical systems, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. And that's, that's, it's so, 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 so true. When I first learned about the runes, I, I, I just thought they were a writing system, um, like a code basically, like little middle school me was like, oh look, a fun new code that I'll learn to write in, because I was always writing in codes and things, um, no, no, no other way to say it I can think of, <laughs> I just thought it was cool to be able to write secret messages, and I was always making up my own codes and like inventing languages, and I learned how to speak backwards, anyhow, like that was what was that was what drew me to the runes and they were in this book dragonology that i had and not even the elder Booth arc so like not even the runes that i use now um which uh, the runes that i use now goes a little bit beyond the elder Booth arc but we'll, we'll get to that um and so it was like 15 years ago that i started learning to read and write with the norse runes and i would keep my journals in them um, like I would I would write anything particularly sensitive about anytime I was gonna name a crush by name uh, I was definitely writing about that in runes because I was like I don't want anyone to read this Well, what's really cool about that is that I always kind of bemoaned How uh, you know, I could I could write them very fluently because I did it all the time But I couldn't read them very fluently at all because the only things really that I had to read were my own I didn't even have internet at the time like this was before when I was in middle school I was in middle school from like 2004 to 2006 I got internet in my house in middle school but it was like eighth grade the cool thing about that is that my reading fluency has gotten so much better now because I have all of these like decade or over a decade old pieces of writing by me in runes that I can go back and read and my reading is much more fluent now and, uh, and now some of my friends even write to me in runes sometimes, and that's just, just really, really wonderful. And it wasn't long after I started writing in the runes that I learned that they could be used for divinatory purposes. And I had kind of always been interested in divination, although I didn't really, I wouldn't have expressed it that way. I didn't have the vocabulary to express it that way. Um, but I'd always been very drawn to tarot cards, although I... I started studying runes before I started studying before I started studying tarot if you can believe that um, And I say if you can believe that because I feel like people know me much more for my work with tarot both online and in my community like people are like, oh, yeah, she's the tarot reader um, But and I think the runes just don't get talked about because I feel like there's a much smaller audience for runes Maybe I'm wrong though, and I think part of it is because the runes are not really intuitive for most people. Um, they were not intuitive for me. They're still not intuitive for me. Um, but they speak very deeply to me and more so as I've gotten to know them more deeply. And the thing about tarot is that even if you know literally nothing about it, you can pull tarot cards, and I firmly believe this, you can pull tarot cards, and if you're willing to sit with the images that you pull and sit in the question that you asked and look for an answer to the question that you asked in the pictures that you pulled, 
I firmly believe that you'll find something, even if you have zero experience or history or background knowledge or whatever with the cards. Zero. I believe that you can get something useful out of it. I think you can get many more layers out of it if you've studied or if you're working with somebody who's who's really studied and worked with the cards for a lot. But I think absolutely even the most beginner of beginners, novice of novices, can get something um, really magical out of an experience with the cards. Um, with tarot cards specifically because of the way that they are illustrated. And even beyond that, you really only have to know a few very basic symbolic correspondences to be able to figure out the next step beyond that. Um, runes are not like that. Runes are a, a mysterious set of shapes that you ha you know there's even 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 the historical literature that we have that tells us what each rune is conflicts with itself and i i mean i don't i don't think that it's really a conflict in most cases but as as the language and the culture evolved and the runes traveled through variations of the languages and cultures the names of the runes changed and so even the pictographic or ideographic symbolism of the rune changed as it moved through the culture and what I find as I study these is that often throughout all like across all of the different um, specific ideographic and pictographic interpretations or meanings of, of each rune there is some inner essence that connects them there's urus as the the rain coming down from the clouds but then there's also urus as the the horn of the wild oryx and and both of those are valid, and both of those are part of what Urus is, and there's a thread that connects those. And to me, it's it's that raw energy of manifestation of the immaterial into the material. And, you know, that's vitality and life force exhibited in the oryx, and that's the blessing of the rain. You know, it's it's this, this etheric presence being made solid or liquid <laughs> on on this plane, and, and that's there's things like that all throughout the runes but but you have to it's not like urus means rain and it's not like urus means wild oryx it means something that is essential about both of those from the perspective of the people who originally came up with or received this system in the first place and so it's a it's a symbol language where tarot, I think, is a very universal symbol language and the tarot images that we mostly work with today were created less than 150 years ago. The runes are much older than that. And so the tarot depicts images of, of scenes that we recognize, people that we've met. And the runes are, they're not detailed representations because they had to be able to be carved into stone or into wood. And additionally, I think that much like many Hansa or kanji in Chinese or Japanese are ideographic or pictographic, even though they're not pictures in the sense, you know, the initiated, those who studied those characters can see them and know very clearly what they mean and even see, oh, okay, that's the, that's the grass radical, that's the sun radical, that's the mouth radical. And it's like those mean things to you. And from those, you can, you can piece together a little bit of what what a what a character might might mean even if you've never seen the whole character before and i think there's something like that in the runes this is really we've gone we've gone on a lot of tangents so far and i i do want to get to talking about more of more of what i really came here to talk to you guys about and so not long after I started reading and writing with the runes I learned that they could be used for divination and I, I bought a book on that probably around my freshman year of high school I don't know maybe even earlier than that and I bought a book on that it was called simply runes it was terrible it was you know it was it was posed as as memorization and I don't do well, I think most of us don't do well with just memorizing facts. We have to have a story or narrative to anchor the facts in. And so when you just tell me, as, as my first rune books did, that Fehu is cows and therefore it's wealth and gold, I'm like, okay, what? And then they're like, Uruz is also a kind of cow but it's more like energy than money. 
And I'm like, okay. And it's not actually that these things aren't true. These things are true. But for me, when there was no way to anchor the runes in a story, there was nothing for me to take home. I should be more clear. It's not that the books that I've read since this first book offer like a story exactly that the runes are in. It's more that they offer the historical context, historical context of the runes, which allows me to kind of translate back what they meant to people in the past and therefore what else they might mean now and into the future. And it was, it was always me just trying to memorize, um, trying to memorize basic correspondences, and I was trying to divine with them, and that was the, my primary motivation, was to learn rune divination, which uh, the more I've studied them, that's become less and less important to me, and I think that that may, I suspect that that will become a part of my practice, a bigger part of my practice in time, um, but not, there's some things that I feel like I need to do before I'm ready for that and maybe maybe we'll get to talking about that this is turning out to be a much longer video than I planned I don't think I actually did talk about this um, so I'll cover it now really quickly um, I know some of you are probably wondering wait if they're not just an alphabet and they're not just a divinatory system what are they well the thing that they were primarily historically and that they are primarily to me now is a magical system as in a system which you can use to invoke or call up certain forces or really which can use you and move through you and uh, you know all of the above and uh, the, you know we'll get into a little bit of that later but I wanted to clarify that my main focus with the runes has been learning their personalities integrating their lessons and their wisdom into my life and um, learning to work with them magically and also doing some very basic um, uh, very basic and simple uh, magic and divination with them. So I, I you know, I, I, I cast, I had a rune set and I would cast them and I would look at them and I would be like, what? <laughs> And then I would put them away and you know a few years went by like that and I continued to read and write in them and I continued to think about them um, but I didn't really have the resources that would help me do what I was trying to do and a few years ago maybe about four years ago yeah dude it was even in spring I think it was about four years ago um, right before I went to Morocco I found myself in a half price books here in Austin and there was a copy of Edred Thorson's Futhark, a, a, a rune, oh, it's right here, what's it called, a handbook of rune magic and uh, this is actually a really great book and I had never heard of it um, and I had actually, I had even, I'd had a boyfriend who was um, a Sashiru and, and very into all the Norse Norse magical things. He wasn't super into rune magic, or if he was, we didn't talk about it much. Um, but he recommended a few books for me. I don't think he recommended... I don't know if he recommended this one. I know he recommended Diana Paxson's Taking Up the Runes, and I don't know why it took me 15 years of working with the runes to finally get myself a copy of that book, because I have one now, and that's what I'm working through this year, and that's part of what I feel has been really transformative. Um, in my practice, but I would say that it was about four years ago that my study of the runes got serious, and it was because I bought this book, and I took it to Morocco. I, I just, I zoomed through it, and I kept a, a notebook, which I don't have down here, um, but maybe I'll splice in some footage, we'll see. And I kept notes, and uh, the, the primary notes that I took about the runes, I, I drew what was called, what I called a rune map, and it was just a, you know, I just had each three sets of eight runes on two-page spreads. Um, so it was three two-page spreads. And and I drew each rune as I read about it. And I colored it in and I wrote notes around it. And I drew some, you know, I, I, I drew some reminder of what, what the, the ideographic or pictographic 
meaning of the rune was according to Edward Thorson. And this this book started to give me the the story that I needed to remember what what the runes meant and not not just to like remember by memorizing but to to have some sense in myself of what a rune meant and what it was good for and my knowledge still is totally not anywhere near complete and and we'll get to to that um and part of this is because I'm I'm I've always been a voracious reader and I read so many magical books as a as a young teenager and a young adult and I can't tell you how many books I read just like zoomed all the way through and like the books would have so many exercises in them and I didn't do any of the exercises like I was the worst baby witch worst baby witch so I got back to Texas after a really wonderful trip to Morocco in which I spent all of my spare airplane time and and I got like trapped in Lisbon for 24 hours so I spent and with I had like zero money so I spent all that time studying the runes and it was just like I I, I took in a lot of information and that that form of note taking really helped me um, to process and integrate the information. And then, thinking that I, I knew so much and I was just going to start experimenting, I went back to... I've never talked about this publicly, actually, and I'm like... And a little bit of me is like, Vervain, there's no way that this was your fault and that your rune magic caused this. There's no way that anybody could blame you for this. Just talk about it. It's ridiculous. And then part of me is like, I ruined everything and you know not like ruined everything because you know plenty of things are still just fine and you know I'm still here and I like where my life is and the farm is still there and they're doing fine so you know it's fine but uh the farm so I was working on a farm at the time and I got back from Morocco and I went to work on the farm and we were planting tomatoes and I just thought what's a good rune you know off the top of my head and I did you know I didn't have a very complete you know I had integrated a lot of the information um that I'd been reading about but I hadn't really worked with or meditated on the runes it was still kind of encyclopedic knowledge and not experiential knowledge that I was working from and it wasn't even very good encyclopedic knowledge because I had a lot of missing pieces and holes and I just didn't have a very complete understanding of the runes and I I still I mean I hesitate to say that I have a very complete understanding of the runes now but I I think I have a much more complete understanding of the runes anyhow so I'm like okay let's just do a little experiment and let's put a rune in the dirt at the base of these plants and I was like okay what what do plants need what's a good nourishment rune and you know if I'd been smart if I'd had more complete encyclopedic knowledge of the runes I probably just would have put Fehu. I might maybe maybe would have put Burkana. Um but I didn't. I was like plants need water. Lagus is water. We'll put lagus at the foot of each of the tomato plants. So, something like three days later, I was laid off from the farm, Sean was laid off from the farm, and everybody else, except for like one person who was really good, <laughs> was laid off from the farm. Like, everybody who was on my crew got laid off all at once because the rains came. And the rains came so hard, they flooded like most of the farm totally flooded out the tomato fields um they like lost most of their tomato crop and so it was like we lost most of our crop we can't afford to keep these people so bye and you know in retrospect lagos isn't just water like it it literally translates as lake and (laughs) 
you know, it's got, there's other things that it translates as too, like leek, like onions, or potentially leek, like, um, yeah, anyhow, that's, that's, so that was kind of my, my, uh, flashing red light, my little red flag from the universe that was like, hey, don't fuck with forces that you don't understand, because they are too big for you to handle right now, and I was like, I seriously was just trying to help some plants grow. I just wanted to help the plants grow. And the universe was like, yeah, well, you called in a lake. So again, that's like, like on the one hand, it feels extremely silly for me to be taking any amount of responsibility for the rains coming and wiping out a tomato crop. On the other hand, I definitely put the rune lagus at the base of, I don't know, probably like a hundred tomato plants. Like saying this now, I realize, sorry. Saying this now, I realize how stupid I sound. I realize how idiotic I sound. And the reason that I'm talking about this, I tell this story, I haven't told the story online before, but I tell this story to like, basically anybody who ever asks me about the runes because in in a in a way that indicates that they're interested in studying or using or working with them because I'm like guys this is real magic don't just play with it like it's not a toy <laughs> keep out of reach of children this is not a toy it's not it's not a toy um and i i i i I did that and I did that so that you don't have to do that and I lost my job over it so <laughs> I've already been punished yeah so at that point I realized that I needed to do some more studying and some more like light experimentation in a safe container not just like calling lakes onto someone's farm and like I apologize guys so I guess where we're going with all this is that after that, I really took a step back from the runes and I continued to read about them and I continued to, you know, make some notes about them and to, you know, read people's like personal blogs or whatever. And I had, I picked up another book, what's it called? The Woman's Book of Runes. And I read a little bit of that, not a lot of it. Um, I've kind of dipped in and out of it. Um... And, you know, I continued to, to flesh out my knowledge. And about, I guess about six months ago, I got the call to, like, the message that I received was very literally, like, these were the words, like, I was called to invite the runes into my body. Uh, which sounds scary as fuck, or it did to me at the time, anyway. I was like, uh... The last time that I drew, like, that nice little moony, oniony water rune, like, I flooded a farm and lost my job. So I got the call to invite the runes into my body, and I promised I would do it, kind of, without thinking too hard about what that meant. And right after that, Abigail, Earth Angel Abigail, who's, like, one of my very best friends, and her words, not mine, my, my rune student, I guess. Um, and it's, I, I mean, I guess it's fair that I've, I've passed a lot on to her and opened a lot up to her, but like she's done, I think you have to do most of the study yourself when you're studying something like this. Um, anyhow, so we've, it started, I was teaching her and now I think there's still a little bit of that, but it's much more of an exchange between us as we're both studying these. And so she came to the Citrine Palace and she brought a copy of Diana Paxson's Taking Up the Runes. And I was like, oh, I'm supposed to have this book. I've been, like, people have been telling me for, like, seven years that I'm supposed to have this book. And I, like, flipped through her copy and I was like, this book is really cool. And I ordered a copy straight away. And as soon as it arrived, I started reading it. And the thing about the book is it's split up. It's got each rune, uh, or each chapter is two runes. And so the first chapter is Fehu and Uru's, and the second chapter is Thurisa's and Ansu's, and the third chapter is Raido and Kina's, and the fourth chapter is Gebo and Wunyo, and that's where I am. Um, and it's very interesting. It's, it's really good. It's I highly, highly recommend it. She quotes or references a lot of other rune texts. Um, 
So she includes various translations and, and various versions of the old rune poems. And then she also cites, so she, I mean, she, she includes like most of the main information that's in this book, honestly, is in her book also. And there's other books also that she sor cite sources that she cites similarly for each rune. And it's like, like every rune, she's got like five different peoples at least um, academic interpretations of how it was used historically and how we think it should be or can be used now, today, in the world. And so there's a lot of factual information and she does a really good job. I find that because there's so much, there's all these different facts and interpretations and, and much of it is also from uh, other runesters or runevitki's um, gnosis and personal experience and yet there is there's enough there to tie together the pieces and to find the common thread and the common essence among each of the the meanings attributed to um, each of the runes and at the same time as I bought that book, um, and this was, I'd kind of been looking at this set of rune beads on, I would see them on Amazon, I'd seen them on Etsy, I'd seen them all over the place. Um, and I thought, oh, those would make great dreadlock beads. And I originally thought that I was just going to buy them to have either kind of for fun or just to like pick a few, not like for fun, but like as much as magic is for fun, we'll say for fun. So, you know, for, like, I probably would have put Fehu in my hair, I probably would have put Ewaz in my hair, I probably would have put Wunyo in my hair, I probably would have put Ansu's in my hair. Um, but it was like, I was kind of thinking, oh, I'll pick and choose which ones feel good on which days or whatever, and we'll switch them out as, as the seasons change and as my my manifestation plans change. Um, but when I got this call to invite the runes into my body, it resonated with, with the idea of these beads and with the idea of putting them in kind of one at a time and just inviting experiences or visions or whatever it was, you know, however the rune chose to reveal itself to me, um, I would be open to receiving its messages and I want to do more like individual uh, either like one at a time or two at a time like rune vlogs of like what has been my experience with putting these runes in my hair and what happened when I did because every single one of the eight runes that I've put in my hair um have absolutely manifested in my life like pretty much right away and it's it's really really amazing um I put when I put Fehu and Uru's in I I went on a uh, on like a shamanic journey on my birthday um and I just kind of I sat out in the woods behind my house over by the pond and it was the it was like the middle of the night and the the trees were just like this cathedral and I could feel the sense of being in this like temple space, but it was so pitch black that I couldn't see anything. And so it was, it was like, even with my eyes open, it was like, I, I knew where I was. I had to use a light to get there. Um, I knew where I was and I kind of could feel myself in the space, but I couldn't see any of the actual space um other than like a few little patches of the sky peeking through the trees but nothing that illuminated anything below but in this space it was like I felt myself joined by like all of my female ancestors and like there's a lot of them <laughs> you know it goes it goes back a long time and it was like just this council of women around me and they explained to me, like, I don't know how else to explain this. They explained to me some of the mysteries of the rune Fehu and the rune Urus 
And then I came back out of the woods and I came to the fire pit. And on that night, I don't, I don't know how I really need to do a vlog about this. I've resisted doing a vlog about this because I'm, I mean, I'll just come out, like, I'll, I'll be frank about it. Like, I'm just afraid that people won't believe me and I'm afraid that people will think that I'm just, like, seeking attention or that I'm, like, seeking to put myself on a pedestal or whatever. Um, that's not at all what I'm trying to do. I mean, if I'm seeking attention, it's not for me, it's for her. <laughs> and that is to say that, like, after I received that vision, my, like, myself was literally pushed to the side of my body and this other being inhabited me and... I can't talk about this whole thing. Like, but basically I was possessed by an earth goddess for like the remainder of the evening. Um, and she had a lot to talk about and a lot of story and it, it like was what Uru's, I don't know. It was like, like everything that she had to say totally explained Fehu and Uruz and like how what they are and what their parts are in the world and how they how they meet and how they matter <laughs> and I don't this will be way too long a video if I try to go into that at all but I you see what I mean I don't know tell me if you think that this would be useful you can see I'm like not even looking at the screen or making eye contact because I'm so I feel so weird talking about this on camera. It's weird because, like, I don't know. I, I don't feel... I mean, Sean was there. And he's, like, the most down-to-earth, doesn't believe in anything, he can't touch and measure, atheistic, and, and maybe even, like, nihilistic people I've ever met. I say that with all the love in my heart. Like, so part of me is like, well, he was there. He saw it. He believes me. There's that. And then also part of it is, like, for some reason, all my friends believe me. <laughs> I don't know why. And it's, it, you know, it's the, the reason it's hard is because I know that before it happened to me, I would not have believed anyone else. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. It's hard to believe, man. It's a lot to believe. And it's like, it's one thing for me to ask you to believe that I was possessed by an earth goddess for a few hours. It's another thing to ask you to believe the things that she told me. Um, which I guess that really should be a whole other video. This has become about way more than the runes. I think the main point <laughs> that I wanted to make in this video is that the runes are serious magic. And I think that they're absolutely worth working with and they're absolutely worth studying if you feel called to them. But they're not toys. They're not toys to be played with. They're not just... A fun code and you know I, I say these things with all the love and compassion and understanding in my heart because I thought they were just a fun code and I thought they were just kind of charms trinkets toys um, you know little pieces of magic to be played with but they're not they're the building blocks of the universe or like the 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 warp and weft of the universe hard to say there are a lot of things and 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 they are not to be played with or called upon lightly, and I have found that out the hard way, and I'm sharing this with you because I want you to find that out the easy way, and then I want you, if you want to, to learn more about them by working with them. And there will probably be, I think I am just gonna have to go ahead and do vlogs about the other runes, not least because I just started that whole story, and now it's out, so. <laughs> I'm sure I'll have to tell that. Yeah, I don't know. And and so the reason that I that I wanted to talk about this is because I meet people a lot who say they study the runes or say they work with the runes and there I have no judgment for these people but often after saying that or say, you know, professing some sort of expertise, I hear them talk about them and it's like you have no idea what you're dealing with. You have no idea what you're dealing with. Like, you think that's just an abundance rune, but you don't realize that, like, whatever you put it on will increase. And, like, you think that's just... 
Like, you, you think that's just a harmony rune, but you don't realize what you sacrifice for harmony. And, like, is that the most important thing? Is that the, the solution that you... And I'm not speaking ill of harmony either. I, all I'm saying is that there's so much to learn from the runes, and it goes so deep, and and that this practice of, of inviting the runes into my body, and it was inspired by, I believe Freya Aswin is the one who talks about eating rune cookies, um, although I've only read it mentioned, I've never actually read her work, um, probably should. And I actually meant, I try, I meant to make rune cookies once, got a whole bunch of people together, and then there were just too many cooks in the kitchen, and it didn't happen, and um, so I've been, I've been going on this journey more solitarily and very, very slowly. I mean, when I say very, very slowly, I mean, I put Fehu and Uru's in my hair a couple days before my birthday, and that was on November 22nd. And then it was right before Christmas that I put Thurisaz and Ansu's, the third and fourth runes, in my hair. And then I only just put... I don't remember when I put Raido and Kinaz in, maybe not that long after that. Um, but I just put Gebo and Munyo in like two or three days ago. So, and already, already Gebo has manifested majorly and Wunyo like always exists in my life. I haven't received, I, I feel that I have received much of what Gebo is going to teach me this time around, but that I have not yet received what Wunyo is going to teach me this time around. And I'm uh, this is I'm not really nervous about it because Wunyo is like the joy rune. Man, I tell you, I was nervous as fuck about putting Thurisaws in my hair, and we'll talk about that later and like what all went down after that happened. And yeah, I think I mentioned it a little bit back in my like Odin Jordan Peterson blog. Anyhow, vlog. Anyhow. I think that's really enough for today. I hope this wasn't just like confusing AF for you guys. I feel like it was kind of all over the place and I feel like if you don't know anything about runes, this might just be, you might just be like, what? Um, but also like if you don't know anything about runes, like I'm really glad that I got to you before you did. <laughs> if that makes any sense, I don't know. Um, I'm glad that you're here and maybe we can learn about them together and maybe I can share something useful with you and um but yeah if you do want to study them for yourself I really really recommend Diana Paxson's book Taking Up the Runes if I could only recommend one book to you that would be it I'm also right now taking a course uh Valida Vesta Valida Vesta Valida Vesta one of those uh what's her name um, I found her on Instagram and she's got a really cool course and it's on all 33 of the runes and this by all 33 I mean the 24 Futhark or the 24 Elder Futhark runes which are the ones in most books and then there's nine others which are are from I believe from the Anglo-Saxon or they might be kind of from other places and I had actually I felt called to these um, they're the runes that I put well I put eight of them here on the front of Hela's throne when I carved her and then the ninth one is here on the bottom and uh, these are all all the runes on her throne are from that ninth from that fourth set of runes that has nine runes instead of eight anyhow um, and I don't have a whole lot of historical context for those runes, but part of the reason that I felt like I was never really able to get anywhere, part of what I think is one of the reasons why I was never really able to get anywhere with divination with the runes, um, it always felt like it was missing some pieces. The Elder Futhark always felt like it was missing some pieces to me. And I believe that these are the pieces that it was missing in my, from my perspective. And so I'm really excited to go through um, this woman's course. I'll try and link it below if I can. It's totally free if you're interested in learning about the runes. And I've actually, I've honestly only watched her intro so far, but just the way that she talked about the runes and the fact that she included all 33 and just like the way that I found it and the time that I found it, it all felt like it was syncing up. And I'm really excited to 
um, dive more into that. So if any of you guys would like to do that with me, um, I'll link that below and maybe we can keep each other motivated. And if you are studying the runes and you're doing that either with Diana Paxson's book or with Edra Thorson's book or any other book or just on your own or whatever, like, please do get in touch. Runes are one of the things that I love talking about more than anything else. I don't know if you noticed. And, um, we didn't go into a lot of deep detail on what any of them mean today because I was kind of talking more about my experience with them as a whole. And, uh, but I do love, I love talking about the individual runes and the ways that they relate and the tie, they tie in. And like I said, like, I'm still just learning about these things after 15 years. So if you feel like you're still just learning about these things, you're not alone. And I bet we could learn from each other. And you know, that's what I'm here for. So I also like, if you guys decide to do anything similar, if you are studying the runes, like, and you do rune vlogs, please post the link below or send it to me on my Instagram or something so I can find it. Cause, um, that's something I'd be interested in and I love you guys. And this is already the longest video ever. So I'm going to go, but, um, I'll see you later and yeah, have a, have a magical, wonderful, beautiful, fabulous day. As always, if you did enjoy this video, please do hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. If you want to be alerted of my new videos when they come out, please do hit the little alarm bell next to the subscribe button. And I'll see you on here again soon. And, you know, let me know what you thought in the comments below. I always love hearing from you uh, here or on Instagram. Either way, I love you guys so much. Have a wonderful, magical day.